PS2 mini game. Hello guys, welcome to a very impromptu episode of PS2 Mini Games. Uh, what is this impromptu? Uh, as I mentioned in the update, uh, my colleague Dave and main editor uh, will be moving house very shortly. Well, he's in the process of doing that as we speak. Hence, there will be uh, no help from Dave for the editing this weekend because obviously he's got far, far more important things to take care of, which is fully understandable. So what does that actually mean? Uh, that means I'll be editing this weekend's episode. So this can go one of two ways. It can go actually not badly, or as I expect it will go, terribly. <laughs> so this is a very improper episode. Uh, we're going to head to Great Yard CEX uh, again at least once a month. Because generally speaking, they're the closest store to where I actually live. I've had some seriously good luck there between Manhunt 2 and I think there's another game I picked up for a decent price. And uh, it's where I pretty much started collecting about two years ago. So I think I went in there about two years ago and picked up about 45 really cheap ass games. And uh, since then, they seem to know me reasonably well. They know what I'm doing. So yeah, we're going to head there first. Uh, we're probably going to head to the charity shops in between and cash converters. Uh, we're not going to hit up the, uh, there's a there's a pawn shop there, P-A-W-N pawn shop, um, that does lots of like, games and stuff, it's the weirdest pawn shop I've ever been into, uh, every time I go in there nothing changes for the game, so I'm probably going to skip that one this time because uh, I don't need to go there, no my luck they've probably got a shitload of games in, I don't, well, nah, no, I'm still not going, I'm still not going there, <laughs> so anyway we're going to head off to Great Yarmouth now, I'm um, just getting some fuel in a second, so uh, I'll see you on the other side guys. When are going out? We're just going to wind up back here anyway. Right guys, so uh, shop one will be Cancer Research UK. I think I've been there a couple of times, you might see in the background there. Uh, this is a very large charity shop in Great Yarmouth. Uh, one of the largest charity shops I've ever been in. Uh, it does speak for Great Yarmouth though. Uh, for those who don't know or don't actually care, I'll just tell it as is. Uh, Great Yarmouth, I think, is officially in the top 10 most deprived towns slash cities in the country. A bit like uh, Blackpool, Margate, Rill, all like seaside towns and cities that have just been left to uh, just decay over the last 50 years. Uh, <clears throat> it does need some like funding and investment, but it's not all one way. That, to be honest, there is a little bit of self uh, defeatism in Great Yarmouth. Also, there's always a bit of that too. Some people need to like help themselves before they can get help. You know what I mean? When it comes to like uh, trying to make the town better, that's just an opinion, but that's just the way it is. I've worked, I've worked a great yard for nearly 10 years straight, so I can roughly gauge that. But yes, uh, this town could be better, only if people are willing to try and make it better. Wow, that's a bit like Confucius shit, that wasn't. Confucius say! <laughs> Sorry, let's go inside anyway. Yeah, so as you can see, it's actually quite a large store. Next to Sports Direct, once again, it's screaming up great armor. <laughs> Uh, this place is usually packed at the range so uh, I'm hoping it's going to be packed. Actually, this place should be uh, interesting. I'd find anything in that great. As you can see, it's pretty nice. So I forgot to do a cafe in there now. It's actually actually incredibly cheap cafe. If you want to get like a gluten-free carrot cake, it's actually an incredibly good place to come. Not even one of a lie. But anyway. Oh, they're, moving. they're now on the bottom shelf. Interesting. Yeah, so as you can imagine, absolutely nothing here. I think uh, people are starting to cotton on to like, getting games in charity shops. Uh, well, I say cotton on. In Great Yarmouth, they cotton on. They've been cotton on for like year, like 10 years, everywhere else. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so that's pretty disappointing. We'll go and check the electronics on the other side, but I don't think we're going to find anything. <laughs> Mm 
Oh wow, atmosphere of the harbingers, that's actually not bad. Maybe another day, but not for now. Alright, so that's the first door done. Right, so first door down, absolutely sod all worth uh, anything. You might obviously you might say like uh, sing along with Disney, already got that, and uh, one of the same style games already got that. Uh, obviously, I've played it like two games in the past there, so it was worth a try, but nothing. So we're gonna head now straight for CEX inside the center of town, where there's a couple of games I'm actually looking to pick up. Uh, we'll see how I record them. Uh, also, very side note, uh, <laughs> you might, uh, no, I'll be honest about this. You might notice my, my uh, camera work isn't amazing. Sometimes it'll be shaky camera, a bit like this. Uh, couple of reasons for that. One, obviously I'm using a phone to do most of my recording because it's just simple and the camera on this thing is actually fantastic. Two, if it's a windy day, it's kind of hard. <laughs> and that happens more often than you think. And three, and most importantly, when I'm inside a store or at one of these like gaming conventions, it's not impossible to uh, film perfectly. Because as you can imagine, your elbows are like that sometimes. Like, for instance, right now, I would hold the camera like this, what, with a hand like that? So my elbow is about, about half a meter out. Imagine me trying to film someone, someone next to me, and I'm just putting the elbow right in their face. <laughs> just not cool. It's just not, it's just not cool. And, but most importantly, I try not to film people for obvious reasons, because A, they don't want to be filmed. B, it's kind of rude to film random people. And C, I try to respect privacy as much as I can. I'll film anything that doesn't, I'll film obviously every game I can, but I'm a bit wary of people. Obviously you've seen Dan and obviously Dan and friends before, because obviously they've got their own channels and they're my friends, but I try to respect people privately, uh, even if I can say that properly. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting sidetracked again. Uh, let's move on. I got a coffee while I was out there, so it wasn't totally uh, a massive loss. Can I latte? Try it, they're very nice. Right guys, so we're now walking into uh, CEX Great Yarmouth, uh, this is part of the car park as you can see, about a two minute walk, uh, I'm not going to show the whole thing because at, at the end of the day it's going to be quite busy inside town, so I'm going to cut out here and we're going to pretty much come back to when I'm outside the store, so see you in about 10 seconds. We're outside CEX, the rain has literally just started coming on, so uh, I'm about to get inside real soon. <laughs> CX tends to get a lot of like really good stuff. Hmm. I mean, there's like there's a lot of boxed N64 goodness in here, including glove. Glove? Interesting. No word of a lie, I have seen at least three different copies of Castlevania 4 in this store in the last year. It's actually kind of hilarious. Look, you get five copies of Sonic 2, hilarious. Oh, hello. Okay, this has been like two or three months. I thought this would be gone by now, so this actually could have to be a... I might pick this up, depending how much money I've got. Oh, by the way, pick your PS2 controller, hilarious. Oh, by the way, the multi, the multi taps are really expensive. Uh, it's been getting more expensive, so if anyone wants an accessory, get it now rather than later, because it's just gonna get more expensive by the year. <laughs> If I've got a tip for anyone who wants to start collecting, I would choose Xbox 360 or PS3 because they're just getting to that point where they're just getting just an old enough to be like considered really retro. The graphics are reasonably good. Yeah, they'll be a good choice in collecting. They're really good. Oh. 
seriously, why are these games so goddamn expensive? Especially Barbie. Actually, that's me. Actually, the Barbie film just came out. I might actually go up for the roof. Uh, no, I can't buy it in public. This can't. Actually, selection is actually, it's got a lot smaller. Right guys, if I'm squinting, that's because it's bright as hell at the moment, but we just came out of CEX, uh, picked up a couple of things, you'll see later in the video. Uh, we're now heading literally round the corner to uh, <sighs> buses. Anyway, we're gonna head around the corner. Are you kidding me? Uh, every time. We're heading around the corner to see, uh, not CEX, cash converters, if you will. We'll see what they got. So to answer the question, nothing. Literally nothing of any worth. I'd even bother recording in there because there was nothing of uh, notable uh, interest. And uh, that's the first time in cash converters I've done that where there's been nothing, and I mean nothing I want. So that's a bit disappointing. Uh, it's actually market day in Great Earth right now, so there usually is one stall with like games, so we'll have a look at that. And that'll be, that'll be the last place we're going today, so uh, we'll see what it looks like there. perfectly honest, this is probably the brightest day we've had in a week, great oh, you know, for Norfolk even if you will. It's been absolutely pissing down for the last five or six days, so I'll take it. I'll take it. It is July. Jesus Christ, to be like, I understand, I understand the concept of get the hell out of my way. And that but I think I think she was high though because I she had a strong smell of marijuana. So they had literally nothing of any worth in that store. Uh, actually, I might text Dan later because uh, that true pimple. I think they have true pimple platinum, but that's like two quid for a PS1 game. Two quid's real, real. Oh my god, they're frying new potatoes. I'm joking, I don't care. <laughs> so they're frying new potatoes, interesting. Huh. <laughs> two quid? Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, I don't think there's going to be anything else, so we're going to head back to the car and we're going to do a quick synopsis of this trip. Ah, oh, crap! 
Right, so usually at this point I would go back to the games room and we show off the uh, games I picked up there, but due to the fact that I'm quite busy for the next two to three days and I want to get this out rather over the weekend, uh, we're going to do it here. This will be a one-off, this will not be a common thing, I'm just doing it this way because uh, between as, as I'm going to be editing this one, I want to get it all like nicely done in one go, try and snap it together and try and throw maybe an odd joke in there somewhere. This could be quite possibly one of the worst episodes we've ever done, we've ever done but that's because I'm doing it and Dave's not involved in this one. <laughs> so uh, it's going to make me appreciate Dave, well I do appreciate Dave immensely, but it's going to make it so apparent the difference Dave brings to these videos. Anyway, we, I picked up three games from the Great LCX. Usually I would not do a video just for three games, but one of them is actually reasonably rare, so uh, I'm pretty happy to get that one. Anyway, uh, first one, uh, it was a platinum. Uh, Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. As you can see, I paid three pounds for that. Uh, never platinum off the list. Uh, to be honest, the Legend of Spyro games get a bit of a bad rep of because uh, I know they did, they were not as good as the PS1 versions, especially in, in the Dragonfly. In the Dragonfly is not a great game. Let's be honest about this. But uh, that's worth a play. So I was reasonably happy to get that, and it's on platinum now, so I never got to touch that or look for it again. Second one, shockingly, I didn't have Garfield. Garfield, six pound had to pay for bloody Garfield. Uh, I had Garfield 2, but not Garfield. Uh, interesting side notes. One of the most expensive games I've got to buy is Garfield Saving Arlene. That is a ridiculously expensive game, and I have no idea why, but we're talking like upper, like, I think we're talking like something like 60 pound upwards, you're gonna have to pay, play for that, play, pay for that game. I'm gonna have to like Google, find out why, and come back with an episode, but yeah, that's one of the hardest games to find, and I have not seen one copy of it yet. So I'm assuming it was released in very minimal quantity. I see anything I'm thinking of, but yes, that is gonna be one of the hardest games to find for a Garfield game. <laughs> uh, anyway, but the main event and the reason I really went to CX today, and uh, if I've seen the short, you know I probably put this up. Uh, Project Zero Two, sixty pound of this dropped on this, but it's another one of the horror games I really need to pick up. It's one of the horror games that's probably gonna go up in price pretty soon again, and I'm. Um, generally it's static to get this so <laughs> massive win once again to be honest I'm pick i've been picking up quite a few expensive games lately between the the ebay bundle which i got made a killing on by i say made i mean i saved a lot of money on uh between that haunting grounds at norwich game market this uh we're doing very well for some of the rare games lately uh i need to really start thinking about getting some of the games that are over 100 pounds uh <sighs> Interestingly enough, there's about about 20 games that you're going to be paying free figures for these days. Uh, I've got one of them, Kingsfield 4, you've seen it already. Uh, but if I was going to buy from a CEX, which I'm probably not going to by the way, because uh, I wanted to get them cheaper, I'll be paying free figures. So eBay might be coming in handy for these, because I, I might save maybe £10, £20 there. Which doesn't sound like much, but to be perfectly honest, when you're trying to get a collection, Little savers there and here and there make a massive, massive difference. And uh, there's some games I don't really want to play free figures for because you think to yourself, why is this game worth free figures? And you have to Google it. Obviously, things like uh, Rule of Rose and uh, <sighs> the Manhattan game, Manhattan, I keep forgetting what I'm paying. Anyway. Those games are going to be paying at least £400 up, which for both of them. That would be a hard day. <laughs> that would be a painful day. But I committed to this and I'm going to try and see it through. Uh, interesting that the collector's editions of versions, uh, finding them was hard work. For instance, Ultiman, Ultimate Spider-Man, the collector's edition, the one with like Venom on front, that's a rare, that's a rare version, that's like £28 upwards, that's hard to find. Uh, the Scarface, the uh, Scarface game, that collector's edition, that's a reasonably hard to find too, that's even paying about £20 for that also. So the collector's editions are going to be interesting ones to like, look for. Obviously, the God of War, the God of War Special Edition. Uh, that's I saw that at Noise Game Market. Well, I didn't see it. I missed it apparently. And uh, Dan saw it, and then, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'll find it anyway. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this uh, very impromptu episode. Uh, please, I'm going to say it. I got close. Say it every episode now. I hate this. I hate saying it. To be honest. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. I hate it. It's so so cliche. I do reply to nearly all of it, nearly every comment. If I don't reply to the comment in like, like, a long, like for hours, that's because I'm working. Simple as that. Uh, or I'm knowing in my phone. Simple as that. Uh, I'm sweating like hell. So hot at the moment. Uh, <laughs> obviously, this was going to be the London Gaming Market episode, but that's going to be now next week. 
I don't have any plans after that. Obviously, by the time you've seen the London Gaming Market episode, I would have been and gone to Nottingham with Dan. And so, hopefully, I will find some really interesting stuff there. Uh, interesting note, Nottingham has five CEXs. Five of them. Why they have five, I have no idea. But there's five in, like, a general radius. So, that's going to be an interesting day. Also, there's, there is a certain uh, museum we're probably going to go to, which I'm going to record because I'm actually looking forward to that. So, it's going to be a fun-packed day. Uh, just for those curious, because uh, Nottingham's not close to me, I would have to get up like half five, pick up Dan for like half six, then like three hours or four hours to Nottingham. So by the time we get to Nottingham, it'll be like 10 o'clock, and we'll probably be there for at least six or seven hours, like doing our stuff. So we literally are on the go from early till late. So it does pay off because at the end of the day, I enjoy my stuff. I enjoy, I enjoy my stuff. I enjoy myself. I do find and get games I really need. And obviously I'll hang out with Dan, which is, I enjoy the hell of it. He's one of my best friends, so yeah. And also I'll be bringing another one of my best friends, Scott, along with it too, because, uh, well, Scott is my best friend. Well, well the best friend, really. I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, for those who don't remember Scott, Scott's one of the people I kidnapped for the D&D episode at the start. <laughs> so I'll be kidnapping his ass again for this one. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of the day slash evening, and I'll see you later, guys. Bye. What the hell is that?